everybody, it's Leanna on your Video Geek Download. Um, hope you've been enjoying the radio segments. I don't hear them very much because they don't have them in my city. Embarrassing admission. Anyway, don't know if you followed uh, any of the Game um, Developers Conference news other than here in my videos because I'm awesome. But uh, a lot of talk about women in the industry making games for women and making games with women. We've got the wonderful David Gator out of Bioware in Canada. Yay who did this wonderful talk about um, not excluding women from games. And it, he echoed something I've been saying for a long time about women who play games. I'm going to say women and not girls because it is a different mindset. But uh, women like me who play games, we don't need a game for us. Because if you made a game for a girl, shut up computer, volume down. Um, if you made a game for a girl, it would be, you know, pink and unicorns and cupcakes and shopping and dresses and shoes and I'm going to stab you in the eye because I don't want to play that. Um, David Gator put it best that let's just make, let's figure out how to make games that don't repel women. And that is honestly all people like me are looking for. We want to feel like this game was not not made for us, if that makes any sense with the double negative. Not not, not not made for us. Not made for us because we know we haven't cracked that critical majority of the market share, but we want it to not not be, you know, clearly not made for us. And no more obvious is an example of that than first person games which games like Bioshock and Halo and games like that um, belong to. Because the thing about first person games is because of the, the camera perspective, there's supposed to be this element that you are the character. That's why you're just seeing your hands and your guns and not yourself. But the minute Master Chief, or the minute in the case of Bioshock, uh, Booker DeWitt, or you know the uh, Subject Delta, or any of these guys open their mouths, I know that's not me. I'm not a dude and, you know, I, I'm not sick, so I'm not talking like this, you know? Um, so that becomes a problem in terms of inclusion for women in games like this, um, which is why so many of my friends have uh, started playing games like Dragon Age and Mass Effect, possibly because I talked about them incessantly. But the thing that makes the Bioware games different is they actually have a large number of writers in their pool, and a lot of them are women, meaning more than one. Um, and so they get these various perspectives, and people have the ability to go, um, yeah. And they, they work through those problems at the writing stage, which is super important, because um, Bioshock is getting like 10 out of 10s everywhere. And I played this game. I have no idea how anybody gives this game a 10 out of 10. And then I go, Oh, wait, yeah, I'm not a white dude. And I think you almost have to be a white dude atheist to sort of not stop and scratch your head and see some of the lazy thinking, never mind some of the lazy gameplay design that happens in uh, Bioshock Infinite. No hard saves? No hard saves. Boom, half a point right there. I'm a grown up. I need to be able to stop and start my games when life happens. I can't be sitting there playing till the next checkpoint. And I mean, I guess that's even more important for teenagers because it's that constant fight with their parents. I have to get to the next level, mom, turn it off. Mom, I just wanna, I haven't had a chance to say. I'm flashing back to my childhood, can you tell? And that was when mom came in and forcibly turned off the television Never mind, the console was still running, so I died and lost all my progress on that level back in the days when games were hard. But I'm, I'm experiencing similar frustrations with Bioshock Infinite. In, in, I can't put it down and pick it up when I want. And that's making my second playthrough of the game, which I think is sort of critical in a game that is, you know, deliberately broken into flashbacks and, and voxophone tapes. That's what they call the, the data recorder audio tracks. In, in this version, in this, uh, in this game. Um, but uh, you have to play it through a second time to kind of go, okay, now I see where all the pieces fit. And I'm finding it really boring on the second playthrough. And I'm actually going through trying to make sure I fare. Because I'm going to talk about some stuff now that I'm not really sure I'm ready to talk about. So hear me out. This isn't a final point of view by 
any stretch of the imagination. I'm still working through it. I'm still talking to people. We're still having the discussions. But getting back to that first person perspective, one of the big things that bugs me about Bioshock Infinite it is it tells you what to think. At least I felt it told me what to think. And you are forced into the body, literally, of a white man in 1912. That's epic butt hurt territory for anybody who's not a white man in 2013. Well, this continues when you get into race relations. Um, they touch on the Irish, they have a lot of black-white tensions, but they touch on the Chinese and they touch on Jews, but typical of Bioshock games, there's only one Asian character in the whole thing. Yeah, his wife's Asian too, but she's rapidly replaced by a white woman to show his ascension in status. There was not enough of a female voice in Bioshock Infinite for me to feel included, even though the person you're looking at most frequently in the game is a 19, 20 year old girl. But the problem is you, you can feel that the handprint of the man so thoroughly on her forehead this whole game, right down to the fact that they actually have her first period on display in one point. And I saw that and went, this game was so made by dudes for dudes. Cause could you imagine playing a Halo game and having, you know, like the Arbiter soiled underwear on display at one point, you can push a button and electrocute it to make the poop disappear. No, that had never happened. But we're forced into that moment of, I don't want to think about my period. I especially don't want to think about my periods when I was a teenager cause they're miserable when your body's trying to sort itself out, imagine getting kicked like right squarely in the nuts for about five days every month. That's what it's like and you don't want to think about that. Uh, as the game goes on, Elizabeth uh, seems like this spunky awesome little character who's got, wow, big dreams and I want to go Paris and I want to fly an airship. I want to do all the things I saw in my books, but I need absolute and, and explicit permission from a father figure to do any of it or I'm going to firebomb New York. I don't get it. I, at no, play, at no point does the game attempt to explain how we go from, oh gee whiz, I'm finally out of my tower, classic fairy tale metaphor for feminine in innocence, to I am the seed of the prophet. Yeah, they actually call her that. They actually call her her dead semen. Um, and I am predestined to blow up New York unless this other daddy figure saves me from my future. Guys go, what? What's the big deal? That's just the story. And women go, uh, 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 uh. And these are conversations that's gonna have to go on in other discussions because I'm running out of time. We can only make these a certain length. But this is getting back to what David Gator said in his GDC talk. That is that moment of repulsion. That's that point where I have to sit back and the only way I'm going to get any enjoyment out of this game after something like this happens is for me to go, yeah, this wasn't made for me. And when you're constantly repeating that to yourself, you're constantly saying, this wasn't for me, this wasn't for me, this wasn't for me, then you're not included, you're not at the table, you're those poor women who walked into an after hours party at the game developers conference and were completely unprepared to see scantily clad women grinding on people. And I love scantily clad women. Sometimes in the mood for, I'm in the mood for them grinding on people. But at the end of the work day, when you're still sort of in that professional frame of mind, I can understand why a woman would not want to, want to be singled out as being like that or compared to it. I get it. And it's not saying that it's never okay for a woman to be scantily clad and sexualized. Absolutely not. It's not okay for women to be forced into an asexual position. Let's not go back to the 1960s, please. Like before that, when women were allegedly not supposed to enjoy sex. We don't want to go back there. We want it to be understood that when creative choices like this are made, it's sending a message to anybody who's not part of that core group that you're not part of that core group and this is not for you. And that doesn't mean that content can't be included or, you know, in the case of Bioshock, you can't have a, you know, blue eyed brunette, very skinny 19 to 20 year old girl, which is that 
mathematically calibrated perfect zone of hot and not hot. Like it's that perfect intersection of guys can kind of, kind of quietly go, yeah, I, I'd, I'd do that maybe, but not really. I don't have to. That's, that's what Elizabeth screams. She even starts this thing in like a quasi schoolgirl outfit. I mean, come on. It's borderline fetish. And everyone's going, no, it's not. <laughs> come on. If it wasn't, they wouldn't sell as many games based on that great big, ah, hey, toy eyes, ah, insert tentacle right here. Let's face it. You know you've got that friend who goes there. You know you've got that friend who's drawing Elizabeth being raped by a tentacle fan art right now, and they're never going to post it, but they've got it tucked in a drawer. These guys exist. And like it or not, they deserve a spot at the table because they buy games. But that's the same attitude we have to make to women gamers as well. And so it's a question of an, an, an additive approach, not a subtractive approach. We're not telling you to take content out of games. We're saying add things. Add things for black people. Add things for Indian people. Add things for Asian people. Add things for women who, guess what, are all those colors too. So that we can go, yeah, have your white boy spank material, no problem. Give us something so we can be part of it too. That's all it takes. And while that means you might not be able to do the white male narrative as, you know, nuanced and everything as, as maybe you'd like to, that means other people get to play too, which is what games like, you know, the Bioware games do so well, what uh, Gears of War for everybody, you know, crapping all over it did incredibly well. Um, you know, it's just inclusion. And it's, it's adding those little things here and there that really matter. We're, we're not trying to take your toys away. So um, that's my cat. I don't know if you heard that boing noise that just happened. That's my cat jumping off his perch. So he's about to come here and break something. So I'm going to sign off. I didn't even get to show my picture of Flemeth. Here I must. Flemeth, because she's one of the most awesome women in gaming. Yay! And I love David Gator. And I love Dragon Age. The other one for a second. No, I don't want to go back to Elizabeth. I'll show you why. Now, now you put your right hand out too. Why? Push the camera, put your right hand there. Uh, no, towards the camera. Eh? Like she's this. Now you guys are like the Supremes. We're white. See, well, here's Binky. Say hi, Binky. Hi, Binky. Okay. Say that's been your video geek download. Follow me on Twitter at Leanna K. Binky. I think you need your own Twitter handle, Binky. What's up? All right. He looks really cute now, but he's about to go psycho. Right, Pink? All right. Cat time. One million hits on YouTube. Right? Binky, do something spunky and adorable. Some other time.